everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to show you my very first transformation dress that I ever made, which also happened to be the first princess dress that I ever made. I want to show you how I made it, how it works, and how you can make your own. I first learned about transformation dresses in late 2016 to early 2017 and I knew I wanted to make one. I had taken sewing lessons as a child but I hadn't really sewn in a while but at this point I still wanted to make a transformation dress and I thought I could figure out how to do it. At the time, I remember watching every single YouTube video I could find on transformation dresses, which unfortunately wasn't a lot, but you are going to see how those videos did impact the final design of my dress. As you can see here, my dress design was largely based off of the Broadway version of their transformation dress. You can see how I brought that in with the greens and the brown. For the reveal dress underneath, or the Cinderella ball gown, I based that off of the 2015 Cinderella ball gown. I'm not quite sure when I actually started this project as I don't have a lot of reference photos and pictures of the making of the skirt. But what I can gather from the few photos I do have in my camera roll is that I had bought the materials in very early 2017 and had then cut out and started working on the design of the dress by that summer. This dress is made entirely out of bed sheets and curtains and a shoelace and that is pretty much it and some thread to hold it all together. It's not the fanciest of princess dresses out there but I'm so proud of it even to this day. This transformation dress that I made for my little sister is really what kind of kick-started my whole sewing and costuming journey. This dress still brings back a lot of memories and I will probably never ever part with it if I can help it. But enough of that, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this dress. Due to the fact that this dress was made about five and a half years ago, it no longer fits my little sister as she is taller than me. But I do have this really lovely fuzzy body pillow that is going to work perfect as our mannequin. So this is the reveal dress or the pretty dress that is hidden inside of the rags. So there's the rags and this is the riches. This is made out of a bed sheet and this overlayer is made out of a sheer curtain. Underneath that I have this blue sheet which was also used for the bodice and that is my pretty dress. Underneath that, we have the apron layer, which also acts as a petticoat for the pretty side. And then we have this brown layer underneath, which is the skirt of the rags dress. So there are one, two, three, and then four layers to this dress. I did choose to sew all of my skirt layers into one singular waistband, so they're all connected. And I just used a shoelace for the drawstring. I plan on giving you a closer look at how this is constructed, but before I do that, I wanna show you how this dress actually works. So in this case, I have a child size dress. So what I would do is I would come have my child stand up nice and straight for me my lovely child right here, and I would take my skirt. Again, this has all of the layers on it. It's fairly heavy. All of these layers do give it a really nice ruffle along the bottom. First thing I'll do is I'm going to put the skirt onto my child. I would just have them hop into it, but seeing as I'm not using a real child, I am just going to put this over the head. Once the child is in place, you're going to take your drawstring and make it fairly tight. This is going to help keep everything together. Now just go ahead and tuck those in so it looks prettier. Everything's nice and in place. Then I would take my little bodice and I would just have the child put their hands out in front of them, arms out, slide this onto them, almost like putting on a jacket in reverse, and I would just Velcro them up. My pillow child is a little bigger than the real child I made this for, so it's not gonna close all the way in the back, but it's good enough for our needs. And that's it. Super easy, you now have a really pretty Cinderella dress. Next, I'm going to show you how to set up the dress so you can have the pretty dress inside and you can have the rags dresses on the outside. This is going to be a little bit difficult for me to do on my own because I would have the child wearing the dress help me hold all the layers while I would help them set it up. We already identified the layers earlier, but the first thing you would do is you would take all of your blue layers and the white. You're now going to let all the blue layers hide inside of the white. And you're just gonna bring this up. You can have the child hold the front of the white while you go around the back, pulling up the back of the white skirt. This is creating a sort of pocket for all of the blue fabric to go into. Whether you have one layer, two layers, or three layers, of course, the more layers you have, the more puffy the white skirt's going to be because it's hiding more dress under there. Holding the front and the sides, you're going to evenly distribute everything on this dress, kind of making a little puff. We want this to be at a natural waist height or a little bit higher. And then in the 
back, you are going to have this jacket. So while holding the white in place, you're going to have your child put one arm into this side of the jacket. And then you're going to have them put their other arm into the jacket. While holding this white fluff in place for the skirt, you're going to take your jacket and start Velcroing it up. Unfortunately, my pillow mannequin is a little chubby, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get this closed all the way. So I am just going to hold it in front so you can see. So we're just going to now, at this point, rearrange our white skirt, pull it, tuck it. You can reach inside and you can rearrange some of the uh, blue fabrics to help distribute the bulk a bit better. I've seen some designs where you put all of this in the bodice. I like to have some sticking out so it looks like an apron and it also keeps the top from getting too bulky. You would tuck everything in. Puffs would be covered up. That under blue puff would be covered. This would be tucked in if it was fitting a child correctly. This would all be nice and tight in the front. But that's our rag dress. Very pretty. And then here you have the back, so front and back. So now what the child can do is they can spin around, tear off this Velcro, pull the jacket back as they're spinning around and all the layers come down. You're just hiding the skirts inside of another skirt until you're ready for them to come down. Now I am going to show you the back real quick so you can see how that works a little bit better with the jacket. This is the back, so this is the side, the side and the back. This is the child's shoulders, just so you can kind of get a reference, and this is the bottom of the skirt. So this jacket is just pinned to the white layer of the apron. You can sew it down if you want, but pinning is nice because you can change it. And this is where the magic happens. Could literally add a little jacket with safety pins to any skirt, as long as it had enough layers, and you could essentially make a transformation dress. When the child rips off the jacket as they're spinning, the jacket falls down like this. The white layer falls down over it, and so do the blue layers. And that's how the jacket doesn't fall onto the ground, and it's a seamless transition without any extra pieces or a jacket being thrown to the side. That's literally all it is, and I am going to show you more of the construction of this so you can get a better idea but you're just gonna pin, this is our waistband here, you're just gonna pin the jacket a few inches from the waistband so that once it falls down onto the peasant skirt, just falls down, the pretty skirt goes over it, and the reveal is complete. But let's go ahead and get into the construction of this so you can get a better idea of how it all works. Now, as I am getting ready to show you the construction of the dress, I do ask that you be kind in the comments. This dress was made quite a long time ago and I have gained a lot of new skills since then. On top of that, I have never been professionally trained. I had sewing lessons while I was a child and I did get to make some amazing things. I got to make doll clothes, a dress for my sister, pillows, and a few other things like that. But a lot of it was with great assistance from my sewing teacher and I never had used a pattern on my own at this point and I was just doing what I thought was right. But it wasn't until after this dress that I actually used my very first pattern on my own start to finish following all of the instructions. So even though I had learned how to sew and use a machine, this was very much my very first project on my own. And as I said before in this video, this was the very first princess dress I ever made. First of all, I would like to start off with the bodice because this really has nothing to do with the transformation dress as all of that magic is in the jacket and the skirts. I found sewing patterns completely confusing and I wasn't quite sure how they worked, so I ended up basing this Cinderella top on one of my sister's old shirts. I laid down a t-shirt and measured everything out and then I put it on her backwards and I sewed in all of the darts. You can still see those darts here and here because I had no idea how to keep everything pretty and on the inside. I did manage to get some seams on the inside, but not everything because I just didn't know how to do that and I had no idea how to get a good fit. For the back of the bodice, I used Velcro and unfortunately I couldn't get it to sew through my machine very well, so I ended up hand stitching all of it. I remember this was horrible and my fingers hurt like crazy at the time. 
The little peplum is completely separate. It's just one long tube that I sewed all of this pretty material onto. I just made that blue bed sheet into like a flat rectangular tube and then I sewed on the ruffle onto the one part, nice and flat as so. And then I was able to go in with hand stitches and kind of make it puffy and tack it down where I wanted. This peplum comes completely off using Velcro on the front and the back, which I will do for you in a moment. So in order to get the back open, you do have to take this off here and here, and then you're able to get the child out. So here is what the front of the bodice looks like without that peplum ruffle. And here is what the ruffle looks like. And then this is the front. This is the skirt of the transformation dress. All of the layers are together in one waistband with one closure. I've made quite a few transformation dresses since then, and I no longer sew everything into one waistband. That way the peasant dress is separate from the pretty dress. There's no need to have an extra sheer curtain on top. I just did this to kind of help kill the dark color and give this dress a similar color to the live action dress. For the hem of this circle skirt, I tried using an invisible hand stitch. This is one of the techniques I actually remember my childhood sewing teacher showing me when she was teaching me about quilt binding. You basically sew through the binding so that your stitch is completely hidden. And then on the pretty side, you come up with a tiny little catch stitch. The next layer is underneath that. For this, I used a roll hem. I initially sewed one straight line along the whole skirt bottom, and then I used that to help fold in the bottom and sew it all down in place. It's funny because if you watch my color changing Aurora dress, I talk about how this was my first time using that technique. I was so excited and I wish I had been using this on circle skirts way before, but apparently 2017 me didn't know about this technique. I just had forgotten. Underneath that, I have the white skirt. For some reason, I decided to hand sew this one. I have no idea why, but um, I did with like a whip stitch of sorts. So I just kind of cut everything down with some pinking shear so that it wouldn't fray. And then I did go around with a straight stitch um, along the edge. And then I still decided to use this strange whip stitch. The last layer is our peasant layer. And again, I sewed around the edge. I rolled everything in and then I sewed it down. I went ahead and I flipped over the skirt so you can see this from the inside out, just so it helps give you a better visual of where you're going to be pinning that jacket. So we're gonna pull back this layer. This right here is our waistband and here's the jacket. When you're pinning in your jacket, I recommend opening it up so you can see where it's going to fall on your dress. The further down you have it on the skirt, the better because then you're going to have less bulk in the bodice, but you also want to make sure that the jacket is not going to peek out from the hem. So in this case, when the jacket falls down, it's going to fall to about here, which is fine because when you pull out down the skirt and you're spinning around, the skirt goes to about there and it's going to stay hidden underneath. If your jacket is further down, it's going to peep out from the blue after the transformation. In this case, I had to put my jacket up almost to the waistband to make sure that this wouldn't happen. But again, that's going to cause more bulk in the bodice. If your model's tall, that's awesome. This is a little different in adults as well than it is on a child's proportion. So just keep all of this in mind. In this case as well, I could have made the blue skirt about four inches longer, but I couldn't do that because I was using thrifted materials and I only had so much fabric to make this work, especially because I was doing circle skirts. I do recommend circle skirts because they fly out nicely, but as long as you have enough fabric gathered up, it should work pretty well. So when you attach the jacket to your transformation dress, you're going to lay it down like this with the inside facing down onto the apron. Then you're just going to sew it in place or pin it down along the edges. That way, when it spins down, it just falls nice and easy like that. I also want to give everybody a quick little peek at the jacket itself. So it has these little armbands that do not have any elastic in them. I kept these loose on purpose so that my sister or the child wearing this would be able to take off the jacket quickly. I hand sewed some Velcro in. These are small pieces of Velcro so that it's easy to rip off and it doesn't get stuck. The bottom does have a little bit of a stronger bit of Velcro just because it's really trying to hold that skirt on the bottom and I wanted to make sure that it would keep everything in place. 
You can also use magnets, a zipper, a complicated string system, really whatever you want to do. The opening does not need to be on the front either. You could have two openings on either side, you could have the opening on the back, whatever works for you. This is just what I wanted to do. Then you just open up the jacket. Originally when I had sewn this up, I made sure that I had clean edges. But because this is a jacket, the armholes need to be much bigger than they would on a typical bodice or jacket because it needs to come off easy and have lots of elbow space for the arms to maneuver. So I ended up having to cut out a bigger armhole on the bottom here and I just kind of used a whip stitch to hold everything together. Keep in mind that when you're making your jacket, you do wanna make sure that those armholes are nice and big so that the arms can get out quickly. The back isn't really anything special. This was also just based on that same t-shirt, I believe. Make sure that this top is not as form-fitting and has some room for the skirts to be hiding underneath. Make sure that you also have a higher neckline on the jacket so that it will hide the bodice that's underneath. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you clicking on this video and taking the time to learn how this dress works. If you wouldn't mind subscribing, I would really appreciate it as I do have some other transformation dress tutorials on my channel and I do plan on putting out some more as there are so many different styles and ways of doing this. Bye!